They interfere with estrogen receptors. They cause problems with our estrogen system. It's a fine-tuned system. It's a delicate balance. These are hormones. So today, I want to show you these original lab research papers and talk about inheritance of infertility, how you can pass infertility to future generations from your own chemical exposures, artificial estrogen exposures. And this is becoming a bigger and bigger issue within science because most research is done on such short time scales and it seems like whenever we open up the time scales and do bigger time scales, look at multi-generations, we find bigger and bigger problems. So I'm going to start by talking about some artificial estrogens and end by talking about Agent Orange. So let's actually start with this paper from 2013 in Birth Defects Research Journal. We actually looked at this exact paper last time and talked about the laundry list of health impacts from diethylstilbestrol, DES. It's the drug doctors prescribed from 1940 to 1970, and it causes a laundry list of health uh, reproduction problems, infertility, we talked about last time. But here's the title again, Exposure to Diethyl Subestrol During Sensitive Life Stages, A Legacy of Heritable Health Effects. What I didn't talk about last time was the inheritance, the inheritance of infertility. And there's a whole section in this paper about that. The section is called Effects of Deaths in a Third Generation. And they start that section by saying, if the high intensity of deaths multigenerational carcinogenicity, that means cancer causing, this chemical causes cancer, this drug doctors use to prescribe also causes breast cancer, remember, causes some other reproductive cancers too. Um, if this high intensity of cancer cause carcinogenicity is seen in mice is applicable to human population, this is a health problem of major proportions. In other words, if those mouse research studies have any indication of what's really going on in humans, that's a serious problem, major proportions. They go on to say that it, it could take over 50 years to detect the effects in future generations. Effects from this drug, we used to be prescribed, women were prescribed to prevent miscarriages. The irony is doctors were prescribing deaths to prevent miscarriages and caused a huge amount of infertility and it's passed to future generations. And let's see, environmental estrogens may be more potent than previously suspected, they go on to say, due to synergistic action from concurrent exposures, concurrent exposures. Synergistic, that means all of these top 10 chemicals I keep talking about act on the same estrogen receptor they're synergistic, so there's a bigger, they're bigger problems than we think because researchers are just studying one at a time, but they're all acting in the same way in our body, causing infertility. All right, grandchildren are also at increased risk for cancer when they're exposed to, when the mothers from previous generations were exposed to deaths. So cancer, they, they've talked a lot about cancer here, but they say early reports of deaths, grandsons show an increase in hypospediasis um, 20 times more frequent in deaf grandsons. That's a male sex, um, sex organ defect. So things are starting to come out. Transgenerational infertility. Let's go on. This paper is from 2015 in Scientific Reports, one of the Nature Journals. And this one is huge. This one's called Transgenerational Effects from Early Developmental Exposures of BPA or EE2, ethyl estradiol, birth control estrogen. In Mendaka, that's a rice fish that they use in research studies to try and understand this, use it as a model, all right? And so yeah, they're studying BPA and EE2, again, birth control, oral contraception. They're looking at, they tested for transgenerational abnormalities. So basically they just put this stuff in the water and they found that both of these chemicals, they acted the same way, BPA and oral contraception, led to a significant reduction in the fertilization rate in offspring two generations later. They call that F2, F0, F1, F2. So they were literally exposing F0, the mother. And then two generations later, they didn't have any other exposures, just that one exposure, they found reduced fertilization rate two generations later, as well as reduction of embryo survival 
in offspring three generations later. Like I said, this is incredible. These are incredible findings. And, you know, these are because of the estrogen receptor. These chemicals are acting on the estrogen receptor. And that includes Agent Orange. And Agent Orange was used in Vietnam to eliminate vegetation. And, and then they discovered that over 4 million people were exposed. And literally 1 million of those people are still suffering from health problems today. And let me explain why. 1996, the Journal of, Bio the Journal of Biological Chemistry, JBC. The title of this paper is Anti-Estrogenic Effects of 2378 tetrachlorodibenzopedioxin tetrachloro that's that's basically agent that's agent orange that's one of the chemicals in agent orange that's the chemical that's causing all these health problems i'm just going to call it agent orange instead of tetrachlorodibenzopedioxin from now on all right the the estrogenic effects of agent orange are mediated by direct transcriptional interference with the liganded estrogen receptor they interfere with estrogen receptors. They cause problems with our estrogen system. It's a fine-tuned system. It's a delicate balance. These are hormones. So the only reason I'm bringing up this paper is just because this was, the, this was an early proof. This is when they discovered that Agent Orange alters your estrogen receptor. It says, we provide evidence that the loss of trans transactivation potential by estrogen receptor in the presence of TCCD, that's the Agent Orange, is due to a sharp decrease in its ability to bind the estrogen response element. In other words, it's altering the estrogen receptor. Moving on. 2014, I've got this paper here from Toxicology, Toxological Sciences Journal, and it's called Using Zebrafish as a Model System for Studying the Transgenerational Effects of Dioxin. All right, and what dioxin did they use? 2378 tetrachlorodibenzopedioxin, Agent Orange. And they say Agent Orange has been associated with many disease states in humans. But specifically, again, look at the title, transgenerational effects. That means it's passed on. What do they find? They exposed zebrafish to Agent Orange for one hour. One hour. Again, mm, short exposures maintained the offspring of course and they wanted to determine whether we whether we could find adverse effects in the next two generations they call it f1 and f2 again uh, and it produced a significantly higher female to male ratio in all three generations so it was it was causing either more females or killing the males in the womb or in this case in the eggs um, which is interesting but here's, here's the main point. Egg release and fertilization success were reduced in the Agent Orange lineage F1 and F2 generations. In other words, this is another chemical that acts on the estrogen receptor. We've got BPA, we've got E2, we could go on, we could talk about other ones. A lot of studies need to be done on a lot of estrogenic chemicals we're being exposed to every day. But beware, these exposures you're having to artificial estrogens are causing increased infertility in future generations so even if you're really being cautious you might be having some effects from your parents you know being exposed to these chemicals and the best you can do is obviously avoid them yourself and improve your fertility and the next episode we're going to talk about how cholesterol and eating good fats are important for positive fertility, improving your fertility.